day, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough to do, I'm Bushka, welcome back to the channel, and I've got a great, I can probably hear the smile in my voice right now, I've got a great game to show you today, one from the Object 252U, which is uh, Mystic here, and another one from none other than my good mate Swiss Cheesel, he's back in Blitz, the rage quitting monster of Australian Blitz. <laughs> He's back, and I got a monstrous game from Swiss in the mouse. And it's only fair enough that it's in the mouse, because that is a tank that, when it wasn't popular back in the day, he used to rab it on about and have a go at me, because I didn't give it enough credit. And he was right. He's a very good player, too, as you're going to see. And it's got an interesting twist on the end of it, so stick around! This is a great game, because Mystic is doing the right thing by his team. He's a heavy tank, and... Not only is a heavy tank, he's pretty much the heavy tank de jour right now for tier 8, which is saying something considering how many big boppers there are at tier 8. The problem he's got is he really wants to get up close and personal across there, but he's worried about exposing that lower glacis to all and sundry who are just straight ahead of him. Now, this is a shot that I really didn't expect to go in, but at the same time, he paid for it. There's a Yag Panther 2 there, and he copped one just under the lower glacis. I can't tell if it was from the FV or the Yag. May well have been from the FV, actually, because it was in the 200s. This is a Russian gun. A Russian gun that does 420 alpha. He's desperate to clear one of those tanks over there. Because although he's nearly impervious to the Cruel Twist standard AP, it still stops him from pumping up and poking. And the Tiger P is going to get ground down. And once the Tiger P gets ground down, it's going to be very, very tough for our Amigo here in the 252U to just hold on, I'm coming. The Yag Panther 2, though, has made a mistake. He's gone early. He should have let the Cruel Twist over there and all the mediums on the flank get the job done. And he wouldn't have bled 800 hit points. As it is, now it looks absolutely diabolical. And he's had to pull straight back here. He's got no choice. And this is a good move tactically. There are too many tanks in front of him and to the side of him. And he's really got to narrow down the options. Because even though the 252U is broken as hell, armor profile wise if you get to shoot at it from the side it's going to go in especially if it's an fv 201 which is a hell of a british tank now i won't pretend that that wasn't a fantastic stroke of luck but it still doesn't really change the fact that he was a two shot one from our amigo here and one from the lurva in the grand scheme of things it wasn't that special but what is special here is that he is using the rock spectacularly well to keep that yag at bay and that 310 alpha is telling because it means the yag's got the 105 millimeter and not the big dog 12.8 centimeter pack that is brutal and those two shots he got into the superstructure earlier as the yag overextended to get the kill on the tiger p are telling they allow him to absolutely rinse that remaining Yag Panther hit point pool. And look at this. It's not great for the Lerva over there who has done a heroic job holding off multiple tanks. But what it is very, very good for is our Amigo here who has now got everyone in a line coming to him from the front, which is where he does his best work. This needed to go in and does. And you can see that although the Lerva was tough, he has held those three guys, given them to him, our amigo here, Mystic, in a straight line. And he's leveraging that rock again, the super slow mobility profile of a 101P climbing up a hill is nothing you want to be involved with. High pen gun on that Panther 2, or reasonably high pen, certainly enough to get a hold of that lower glacis. But he makes a mistake here, and he goes for a standard AP round which is never going to get it done. And that's the end of the Panther 2. Can he get down? Oh, yes, he can. Sneaks under the gun line. Brilliant move from Mystic. And now we've got two monstrously OP Tier 8 heavies duking it out like bosses. We talked about the 105mm before on the Yag Panther 2. Let's talk a little bit about the gun on the VK-101P here. He cannot seem to get that gun down to bear on the lower glacis. And he is firing on a very, very strong upper glacis. And it's just a razor's edge between unpenable and flat. The only problem is for the 101P, he's got to extend himself here to get shots on Mystic. There's no way around it. And Mystic is really taking his time. Look at this. He's at 
APCR loaded. He's only got three rounds of it left, but that's all he really needs. And he is waiting for the perfect opportunity to slink one into that top hatch. There it is. Sub 300 roll. Could have done better, but he'll take it. This is the 101P's only chance, and he's going to go for that lower glacis. And the angle is so steep that he's actually going to fire underneath the lower glacis and expose his soft underbelly, smog style, to the arrow of death from our Amigo Mystic. 5,250 damage. Kolobanov, all the bounces, all the XP, just get wrecked blitz. Hell of a tank. But it wasn't like it was an easy run. He had to do a lot of good things, and he had to do them in the right order, and he got it done. Talking about a hell of a tank and a hell of a man, have I introduced you to my friend Swiss Cheese, or one of the original humans that I used to run around with back in the day when, uh, you know, all the new things were happening in Blitz, and he's driving his beloved mouse. Swiss has never been averse to paying a little bit of the pay packet into the coffers of Wargaming. And as soon as the mouse legendary camo came out from the Twister Cup when the boys from Legion got across the line in Minsk, Swiss was across it like a white on rice. He's also not shy about putting the mouse into harm's way, which is exactly where you want it to be. The theory on the mouse and the reason it's such a good tank is that it not only nullifies tanks that can't pen it, it draws a lot of fire from tanks that can just about pen it at times. And that means that, well, they're firing at Swiss and they're not firing at the rest of the team. That's one of the reasons why he's taking it right up the guts here. There's not a lot to fight here though. The Leopard 1, you can see, is burning away down the bottom of the screen, or rather at the top, the north end of the map. That tier 9, 7, and 1, I mean, maybe in a tier 9 game where there's mostly tier 8s, but in a tier 10 game where there's three tier 10 caliber weapons and a Yag Tiger and a Waffle Tractor, that's crazy talk. They're already down to 183, though, and the Red Tilt is obviously coming through the green spawn. They've gone town. And that means Swiss, if he wants to be of any value at all, has to put this big chunk of German metal in harm's way. There are four red tanks directly in front of him. There's a leopard that's coming around on the right, and Swiss has nothing but himself and a waffle tractor on his right to hope and pray that they can hold him at bay. How are they going to go? Well, <laughs> you're going to find out, because the red team is certainly not shy about coming forward. The Yag Tiger has the nerve to call whole position, and <laughs> as he's on the extreme northern flank, the Waffle Tractor is in spawn, and the IS-8 over there is going after him, hungry like the wolf, Duran Duran style. Swizzle into the side of an IS-8. I've often said if there's one place in a nuclear war that's going to be safe, it's behind the side armor of an IS-8. It gets way more bounces than it ever should. And you can see the red team are lining up for a crack at the big dog. That Leopard 1 could be become very problematic if he pushes up here with Swiss. Uh, he might bleed a lot, but if he gets on the side of a mouse, he can do some damage. Swizzle, though, situated himself very, very well. He's got a rock behind him. He's got a rock in front of him. So he can scrape off any of the bad guys, and he's yet to take a dent hit point-wise. And that's big, because a mouse has 2.5k hit point to get through at the best of times. At 57 heavy, he really should be paying a touch more attention. Swizzle... Complete aim, complete care, complete domination. The Leopard 1, starting to think he might want to edge up towards the top of this map. Although, I don't think that's the tank he wants to see. And you can see why. Couple of bounces. Swiss tossing up between a repair or not. Doesn't repair. Doesn't use that kit. And absolutely well, well judged there. Within an inch of its life, gets a Massive HE roll, 750 hit points into the Leopard. And the Leopard's wondering why he even bothered getting up this morning. Was not expecting that from the mouse. Swiss has bounced that Waffle Tractor once. The Leo sets it up and delivers the coup de grace. Crushing blow from Swizzle. Loves a good shot. The Waffle... <laughs> the Leopard one goes... 
the F. Swiss cheese all GG. 750. Where's my team? Oh, he's talking crap. He's feeling it now. 1,760 bounds. 3,307 damage. He's got that ISA. He's got the 57 heavy. No, he doesn't. Ta-ta, Dorothy. It's all down to Swiss and the Kolobinovsky. Can it be claimed? Can it be managed? Things are about to get a whole lot tougher. That IS-8 has just bounced the back of Swiss. That was not a rare thing, though, to have happen. The amount of times that Tier 8 tanks will bounce, this Tier 9 tanks will bounce, this indeed Tier 10 will bounce the back of a mouse happens constantly because the armor profile is nothing short of enormous. And you see the second HE max roll on a target in the same game from Swiss Cheesel. This kid has got it going on. Could it be the day of the Swizzle? A huge amount of hit points to get through yet. And he's saving his damage for that particular waffle tractor over there because he knows the IS-8 is going to struggle to pen him. The waffle, though, has that 150mm gun, and that is what it's all about. I would suggest that the IS-8 may, in fact, not have any Premo ammunition, and I believe that may be correct. The IS-8 puts another into the back of Swiss. Swiss doesn't muck around. Beautiful angle on the waffle tractor. And the IS-8 has raised it up. He's telling his team, no ammo left. And you watch that comes up in the chat. <laughs> Unbelievable. Swiss hits the track at the back. He's not mucking around. Why are you out of ammo, asks the Leopard. The IS-8 has no reply. And Swiss Cheesel, in an improbable turn of events, gets another max roll to finish. Comes up with 7k damage and 4,500 bounced, you big dog. The kid from Frankston doing it tough like nobody else can. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. I'm Bushka. Bye for now.